one year later, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, Episode 5. Really curious to see what they do with this episode. Since the last few were just so insane. How are we holding up? Go to stepping it up, I guess. That's gotta be connected. That is totally a result of what happened. He's saying it so cheerfully, but I imagine the underpinning is never again. Never again caught off guard. He tasted mortality, which is something I never thought I would see from Gojo. This is actually scary coming from Gojo, because he's been this great, this amazing, without really trying hard. He's coasted on his ability. When naturally talented people get serious, it's just next level. Oh, they're drifting apart. It's the beginning of the end. But they were. So 29, premature death. No more hidden inventory. Here we go, here we go. This is how the season started. We've heard this. I totally get it and I actually sympathize up to this point. I'm guessing that for anybody who's watched these videos for an extended period of time, you probably know that overall I'm very positive on humanity and its potential and beauty. But my god, there are just moments, there are times in my life that are very rare when I come face to face with something truly disgusting, something truly repulsive in, in the human element. And I'm hit with the depths of just absolute perversion and evil that are possible in people. And also that it's actually not as uncommon as it feels because society kind of hems in people's behavior to a certain acceptable range so that if someone exposes those behaviors, there's extreme penalty, which means they're, they're living in hiding, they're living in shadow. And that that is just waiting. That's just waiting always. It's there. It's like around you at all times. And if you're not prepared for that, if you haven't like really encountered that before or ruminated on it and come up with an answer for why you still are good or why it's important for you to be not that, you know, independently of things like societal reward or avoidance of punishment, it's hard not to be absolutely blindsided by that. And it can shake your core beliefs about what humans are. And it's also very easy to way over extrapolate or generalize that into something bigger than it is and to get mixed up in it as well. And I've never even experienced anything like what Ghetto went through. Especially dangerous is if you come across either something huge like Ghetto experienced or just encounter it again and again repeatedly. And if that thing counters what you stand for and what you think or what you've told yourself you're doing for the world. And absolute worst of all, if despite all that, they are thriving, they're getting things that they want. They appear successful. They appear to have fewer challenges than you. That's the recipe for absolute revulsion. That's the easy dark side path to slip into when the other way is much more difficult, which is total personal responsibility. Coming to terms with that, having your own motivation so crystallized that it doesn't matter what other people are doing, what other people are, in terms of you following your own your own values and moralities. The truth is probably that it's something you haven't figured out. Or like Ghetto, you thought you knew it, but you don't. It's different to experience it. But he understands now, I'm guessing, Oh yeah, those moments, <laughs> those long moments in the shower. Whoa, what a shot. This is amazing. That clapping seems so haunting. And he's gone. There it is. He got that from uh, Megumi's father. Worldview shattered. I wonder how much Gojo can feel about this shift. He probably has a sense, but maybe doesn't know how to approach the topic. Or maybe he's too focused on his... Expansion. Yes. Still thinking of his buddy. It's pretty deep, deep thought. <laughs> Makes sense. Feels good to feel like you're doing well at something. Huh? We've heard this before. Is this an older sister? 
術師としてはもっと人を疑うべきかとでゲトウ君は答えてくれないのかな I mean, his answer was easier because he doesn't have to eat vomit flavored rags or whatever the analogy was. I feel like it should, but it doesn't. <laughs> But the That's really interesting. How do you do that by making humanity better? Yeah, I'm actually really intrigued. They are the result of negative energy. That's really interesting. I mean, if anime is any indicator of what that looks like, that is surely the path to villainy. Creating a perfect world is anime villain 101. Model case. Kimi mo yoku s h i t e r hito sa. Zain toji. He has a familiar name. I don't think we're going to be using him as a model now, though. And now he's gone. I, it's surprisingly encouraging.、Uh, very discouraging, very insensitive. Yeah, it comes from the normal people. All you gotta do is eliminate that, and you're, you're golden. Oh no, <laughs> oh no! You don't know what you're doing, lady. You don't know what you started. A little bit of a leap there, but okay, Ghetto. Speaking of a perfect world, this clapping is insane. Such a good effect. Oh, it's rain, but it sounds like the clapping, though. It's very honest. Struggling. He's struggling. And we know where that went. Man, this lady was critical for this story. When philosophy goes wrong, when counseling goes wrong. Hard for me to tell how much of that was deliberate or pointed towards an aim. It's a beautiful scene. I love how the, the rain is the clapping. Like it's just always with him, drowning out his thoughts. Also, I feel like this is really crucial for me to see from Ghetto because it, it actually makes his rationale and his reasoning understandable and relatable on a level. There is a, a lot of this that I see. Thankfully, most people don't go the insane route that Ghetto goes down or cynically don't have the power to do so to enact their sick fantasies. But there's a lot of this kind of like labeling. For example, this is the stupid class. I have this point of view. This point of view is so obvious to me. It's so clear cut. Those who disagree or take the opposite stance must be that way because they are flawed. They're stupid or weak or brainwashed. They're tools, slaves, etc. Totally one, discarding the complexity of all of, the, all of the issues involved and ignoring the fact that if problems repeat in perpetuity, It means there's probably a good reason for it. There are underlying factors that may exhibit themselves in positive ways in other arenas. And to a sort of blindness to one's own capacity for error and judgment or understanding or factual knowledge. The weak, as he puts it, is. Very, very overgeneralized label. Who who are the weak? Of course, there is weakness, but there is no the weak, just as there is no the stupid. It's this reductionist thinking that allows him to have a focal point onto which he can direct all of his rage and frustration about the way things are and the things he's experienced. And then this lady comes along and it's just like, yeah, you could always just kill them. <laughs> Gojo is very busy. Yeah, she doesn't have to kill anyone. It's one thing after another. Man, he was just, just there smiling like, and drinking cola not two minutes ago. That really feels like a punctuation mark at the end of Gero's question. One candle goes out, putting a very brave face on this despite his inner turmoil.
This is all very convincing. <laughs> Just living in the darkness all alone all this time. Not even the camaraderie that he used to have. Did I read that correctly? Was that his, his first his first attack? Huh? Gojo just seems blindsided. He's gone. High chance Go Gojo blames himself too for not catching it. Bizarre. Bizarre. Is it Shinjuku? Looks like Shinjuku. He's here deliberately. It is Shinjuku. Yeah, it's Shinjuku Station. Very accurate. Any attempt at recruiting Gojo? Those were his words. Out of his mouth. He could. I mean, the impossible or possible is not really the concern. What's his aim exactly? Is this a farewell? A request? An apology? Can't. Not at this point, anyway. It's my boy. Speaking of Gojo as God, God only helps those who help themselves. These are the girls he rescued. I feel like there's a good chance I've seen them grown up. I just can't remember. He took over. And then they died. Anyone object now? He looks relieved. He looks great. I mean, he's happy. There is a catharsis. There's a re relief in that feeling of, like, effort, you know? It feels clear to me that Ghetto's ideology is there not as... A purely reasoned, well thought out one, but one that he constructed after the fact to justify the outpouring of rage that he has. This too, I feel, is understandable and common. I want to think of myself as someone who is operating logically, thinking carefully, when it's clear that probably for a lot of my theoretical underpinnings, the raw emotion or feeling comes first, and then the logic is constructed to catalyze that, or to create a, a pathway for the framework I already hold, maybe subconsciously or as a result of experience or unmet needs or desires or what have you. How do you even know? How do you discern that when the fact Faculties you're using to discern that are already compromised by that that very thing, that very underlying framework. It's kind of an unseen, unseen. I'm your new dad. He once stabbed me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, he was really about to say that. It won't be dull. It's not a boring story. That was easy. This could be nothing, but I'm wondering if this isn't uh, another split path between Ghetto and Gojo. I mean, I'm a little bit murky on this, but the girl was mentioning two ways to reduce the amount of curses. Ghetto chose his path. The other one was Megumi's father, who was the perfect model and was the only one of his kind. But maybe he's not. Maybe Megumi could play a similar role. Maybe that's partly Gojo's interest in him. Maybe Gojo and Ghetto are on the same path, but just different methods. It's not like Gojo didn't experience what Ghetto experienced and doesn't have the same frustrations. He just somehow managed to not be destroyed by it and to erect principles that govern his actions, which ironically, sadly, were partly inspired by Ghetto himself. Gojo, 
Hey, we're back. There we go. Feels good. <laughs> wow, that was the perfect epilogue to this arc. To be honest, when I first started Season 2, I thought the flashback to the the early days, their high school days, was a little bit jarring because I was expecting to go back to Yuji and the lot because we had such great momentum ending season one. And typically I'm not a fan of flashbacks because a lot of times they just rehash things you already kind of know and they hit beats you know, you know the outcome. But this was not that. Like this definitely earned the flashback. So much more context for Ghetto and Gojo. It makes their, their characters so much richer. It, it's almost extra great for Gojo especially because of what we've seen of him so far. You know, this kind of cheerful, carefree persona. Now you're hit with the depth of his backstory and what he went through and the contrast is just great. It's amazing. Ghetto to me is interesting because while it's clearly villainous, it's clearly wrong, in just very classic villain ways of, you know, creating the perfect world at any cost, having an ideology or, or outlook that is sound to him but is really a mask or the very evil that he detests, while at the same time, especially in this episode, making it, I won't say sympathetic necessarily, but understandable and real. It's a very creative, fictional example to take it to an extreme of 100% real and common phenomenon, I, I think, in terms of where Ghetto goes wrong. The character and story building aside, it was just beautifully done in terms of the plot. Some really heartbreaking moments, some absolute shocking events, an amazing villain who's tightly interwoven to the rest of the plot. Really amazing sequences, not just action, but some of the, the moody sequences, some of the, the imagery. That clapping scene, I don't think I'll ever forget. I love how they kept using that sound effect. In this episode, for example, the ghetto shower I thought was really striking, but there have been moments like that throughout pretty much every episode of these five, with the highlights I think being episodes three and four. I feel like these five episodes are going to make what comes next so much richer. And so overall, I think it was, it was just masterfully done. <laughs>